question that we asked ourselves, of course, as GIZ project was last year, how can we support the validation of the National Youth and Agribusiness Strategy in our partner region and partner counties of Western Kenya? And how can we ensure that the rural youth are actually integrated in this process? Then in the long run, how can we facilitate as GIZ that this well-written policy document is actually effectively put to ground, put to the ground to the benefits of the rural youth in a coordinated model or way? So um, what we did last year and this year is that we tried out and applied some participatory methods and formats to engage the rural youth directly at an early stage. So um, uh, we started off by conducting a scoping study together with uh, youth leaders speaking on behalf of their youth groups where we jointly with them analyzed their situation of uh, high youth unemployment or idleness in the rural areas of Western Kenya. So we actually applied a mixed methods approach of focus group discussions, questionnaires and semi-structured interviews with uh, youth leaders. So we did not only actually only talk to the youth, we also talked to society gatekeepers, to county governments, to private sector. But for the sake of this presentation, we will now narrow down on what the youth actually said. So jointly with them, we assessed uh, social and economic political factors for uh, the high youth unemployment in the rural areas. We also identified youth relevant and youth friendly value chains for them to engage in and explored um, job ideas outside of the box that are interesting to them and where we see the employment opportunities, the realistic potentials. So I just want to briefly show this graphics that was one of the results um, where the key message is that uh, we didn't see the employment opportunities only in the main sections, five, six sections of the value chains, but that there are numerous uh, employment opportunities for them, especially if they um, distribute tasks and specialize on certain services uh, that they can offer or in certain areas, for example, fodder production, chick production, spray services or soil testing, construction of greenhouses and so on. So um, business models that require some knowledge, capacity building and some coordination. Um, but these opportunities are also, of course, quite location specific or even market specific. Um, a more general output of the study was also the very open and frank criticism of the youth that we very much appreciated. So they were actually commenting a lot about what donor and government projects are doing wrong in their eyes. And I want to uh, pick up some of these points of criticism. So <clears throat> one point was that they were saying that very few programs are actually tailored towards them. So the youth often appear as a quota of 20 or 30 percent, but that prevents the programs from being directly targeted and tailored towards their specific needs. They were also saying that uh, uh, critical information often doesn't reach them on the ground in the right time through the right channels or doesn't even reach the right people at all. So they used that phrase, donors scatter seeds randomly. And they were referring to the importance of the selection process of beneficiaries for youth programs. So for example, in Western Kenya, we learned that if we focus on these small youth groups, then we always or often deal actually with social constructs that come together for social reasons or for the mere purpose of fundraising for, for um, governmental or donor funds. So um, we realized that this might not be the right uh, model for us to use. Uh, the youth also highlighted that they want long-term sustainable youth action plans, uh, especially if projects come in for two or three years that the most important or almost as important as the implementation is that the uh, programs come up with a valid exit strategy. So basically, they just requested um, rightfully that they want to be integrated in the strategic planning. And um, that is what we 
asked ourselves then after the study how we can best achieve that. How can we make sure that the communication actually reaches the right people or that uh, donors and county governments can talk and reach the right um, target uh, farmers for their initiatives and not the typical workshop farmers? And how can we facilitate the youth to actually have a say and contribution in these programs and policies? So answer, our answer to that was that we were looking for an approach for a coordinated and structured entry point or gateway, so to say, to reach the rural youth in our counties. Like one of them said, the rural youth have the energy, the number and the voice. The question is how to channel them. So we supported them in a longer process over some months to form and organize themselves um, in a format of legitimate representative county-based youth associations. So we are also aware that this is also, of course, only one part of the solution that has to come with uh, several factors enhancing entrepreneurship. But we see this as a very important point and a standalone approach for GIZ in Western Kenya, that we don't only support individuals or um, these youth groups, but that we find and facilitate a sustainable coordination model, an entry point for donors, other donors, also than GIZ, governments, and even the private sector, when they want to talk to the rural youth, that they talk with someone who is representing the rural youth, and also that the rural youth, when they have something to say and contribute, that they do so with in a legitimate way and that they get heard by the county governments. So what we did um, is that we involved them strongly in the preparations of one of our biggest activities last year, which was the Western Region Youth and Agribusiness Conference. That was a collaboration of the Green Innovation Centers and the Bilateral Project. So in the uprun of the conference, we approached these existing small youth groups and conducted a series of interactive workshops with them to um, sensitize them and talk to them about the importance of self-organization in rural settings as a vehicle for them to enhance their individual agribusinesses. So around June, July, um, the discussions uh, proceeded and um, the youth understood that in order for them to, to be represented, uh, represented on county level, they need to form these uh, legitimate umbrellas associations. Some of them were partly in place, but we have to either form them or to revive them. In these uh, associations with uh, representative structures, they then came up with um, their needs towards the county governments, and they documented that in a form of uh, a Western Youth Declaration. So first they were working in county groups, then we merged the th three groups and also facilitated the exchange with the county governments. In the end, um, this Western Youth Declaration was handed over during the conference. You can see our youth leader, Hillary from Siaya County, handing uh, the declaration over to the executive of Siaya County. But instead of presenting and talking about the youth conference, we will share a brief video of you, uh, with you that nicely documents the process and uh, the action on the ground.